And so for the next two weeks, we're going to be discussing the issue of money. This week, we're really going to dig into the spiritual nature of money and how it's a heart issue. And next week, we're going to get into some really practical stuff on how to do budgets um, and how to structure the way we use our money for God and also for ourselves. We need money to live God understands us. And so this week we're going to be dealing with two primary scriptures. One is from Matthew 6 and the other from Luke 16. So we're going to dig into those. So Luke 16, 19 to 21. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. I think uh, in a certain way as a community we uniquely poised to understand this uh, verse. Uh, we must eat them. Have you ever had moths eat your favorite clothes? And I'm always amazed at how they don't go for the cheap stuff from China. They go for that really expensive one from uh, Woolworths made of pure cotton and they love their natural fiber so they dig and eat a hole through your shirt and it's uh, frustrating. We forget moths on the other hand, we've got borer, you know, they can eat through whole houses. Uh, and so we understand what it's like to live in a subtro subtropical place where there's bugs that love to eat our stuff. Um, where rust destroys them, we live on the coast and that salt air does us no favors when it comes to your car or your comes to your window frames, uh, and where thieves break in and steal. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had that sort of experience, but I know I have. And so we can understand this. And verse 20, store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. And what he's saying is that finances can be really fragile, that you feel like you've got a lot and then something happens and you lose money. Uh, but there's another way of using finances to store up uh, treasures in heaven where it's much safer and it's not subject to the kind of corrosion and the theft that we have here on earth. It says, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. It's amazing how he connects money to treasure and your heart. And what he's saying is that fundamentally money is an issue of the heart. We always think it's an issue of the bank balance, but it's an issue of the heart. And it's amazing how often the subjects of fear are associated with money and greed. How do I get more? Um, and so people left to their own devices without God will kind of go into fear or greed. How do I get more? How do I keep more? Uh, or, or I'm so scared of losing what I've got or you know, scared of not making it to the end of the month. And these emotions are conditions of the heart around money. And so Jesus is actually trying to set us free in this area so we can live free lives. Then he says, no one can serve two masters, for you'll hate one and love the other. You'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. What he's saying is that the human heart is really bad at having two masters, or it's impossible for us to have two masters. Our heart will want one thing or the other. And so generally speaking, people are going to pursue money and finances and the security that, and the fun that that gives, or they're going to pursue God. And we really got to make a choice on these issues. But the amazing thing is that fundamentally Jesus is making this connection between our hearts and our finances. And what he's saying is that the way we use our finances, well, our hearts will follow what we do with our money. And so if we make heart decisions and we use our money, our hearts will follow in that direction. Uh, I lived as a volunteer in Israel for a number of years. And when you're a volunteer, they pay you just enough to keep you alive so you can keep working for them. And so money was always this issue of fear, potential fear in my life. And I really came to this point where I believe God was a provider for me. And so I wanted to be generous and I wanted to use my finances in such a way that my heart would follow out of fear into this place of faith. And so I remember so many times uh, being worried about money and I made up my mind anytime I worry about money, I'm going to give some away. Uh, why? Because I'm going to act in the opposite spirit. This thing is trying to control me out of fear. I'm going to be generous, believing that God will provide. And so sometimes I wouldn't want to go out with my mates to go for a meal. And, you know, we're, we're all young adults. So if you don't go out with your mates, you're not going to have any friends. And if I felt that sense of fear in my heart or stinginess in my heart, I'd say, I'm going to go, I'm going to have a meal with them, and I'm going to buy someone else's meal. Because I just knew that however I used uh, my finances, my heart would follow. And that's, in a certain sense, how God schooled me. Uh, to stay in a place of freedom. Now, I'm not saying that's what every person needs to do. That's just how God led me uh, to steward my finances, to steward my heart, uh, so my heart could be free. Um, the other verse we're going to look at here is Luke chapter 16, verse 10 to 13. We're going to work our way through this passage of Scripture again. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in larger ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. I meet so many people, and I've been 
this person myself at times in my life where it's kind of like, you know, I've got little now, so when I've got more money, then I'm going to be generous. And Jesus is saying, no, you won't. Uh, and it's amazing how often you meet poorer people who are actually more generous and more free with money than wealthier people. And what he's really saying is sometimes we have this illusion that when I get more money, when I get more responsibility, when I get that kind of great job, when I get that kind of great relationship, then I'm going to be this kind of person. I'm going to be generous. I'm going to be giving. I'm going to take faith steps. And Jesus is saying you won't. If you can't do it with the little, you won't do it with the much. And then he says, and if you're untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And what he's saying is that uh, there are true riches of heaven, and that is gifting and authority and anointing and influence, and the ability to make changes to people's lives and to organizations, and really to, to bring the kingdom of heaven in a fuller measure on earth. And what he's saying is that if God can't trust you with worldly wealth, with money, with what's in your wallet, with what's in your bank account, if you're not being faithful there, you won't be faithful with the bigger things. And so uh, it's really saying is that money is a testing ground of our hearts, that by stewarding money well, we're actually preparing ourselves and preparing our lives to learn how to steward true riches, the riches of heaven, and um, which basically means you're in training with your finances. And if you're not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? You know, there's many times in life that before we get the thing of our own, we've got to learn to be faithful with what we have. Um, if you're a student or if you're a scholar and you're still at school and you've got a bedroom, uh, if you want your own car one day, I've just got to ask you, how well are you doing at looking after your bedroom? Because that's something that your parents paid for to give to you to live in and in a space that you get to steward. How well are you doing at stewarding something that's not yours yet before you get your own thing? Some of people here will be renting a flat or you renting an apartment and you dream of owning your own place one day. How well are you doing at stewarding what someone else is and preparing your heart for your own thing? Because the Bible says that the testing ground for receiving your own thing is looking after someone else's. And so are you looking after your landlord's investment? Are you have it, the attitude of, I want to leave this place better than I found it? It even works this way when it comes to uh, serving and, and ministries and, and uh, scope and opportunity to minister within the church. So many of us, we start serving in someone else's team. So maybe you're in a kids' church team or you're in a, a red team, one of our hospitality teams here. How are you doing at serving your leader there? Is it, are they like, man, I can count on this person. They're going to show up on time. They're going to be well rested. They're going to come in with great energy and they're going to build this church and this vision. Um, and, and you learn to be faithful in that environment before you get to lead a team of your own. And it's like that at work too. Sometimes we're working for a boss and we know we're going to bust a, a gut. We're going to work hard so to make our boss look good. And the Bible is saying is that the way we serve someone else's vision is really the preparation ground for being given the responsibility and, and getting the chance to build our own vision. And so wherever you're at, you're in training for something more. And then Jesus comes to the same conclusion. No one can serve two masters. You'll hate one and love the other. You'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to your money. And because what he's basically saying, again, is that our hearts are bad at having two masters. And we're either bringing that perspective of heaven, I'm here to serve Jesus, I'm here to honor God, and I'm going to do that wherever he's put me. Or you're serving yourself, whether it's in your money or your job, your finances, wherever those that is. And so there's this training ground that we have with our money. So often we're looking at our financial situation, we're going, how do I grow myself to receive more? How do I grow myself? And whatever you have in your bank account is a thing God's given you to steward well, to honor Him, and uh, really to grow in this area of influence and responsibility. And so if you're that God complex person who thinks, uh, I can do this thing and really I suppose my money is about me, um, make it about God. Say, God, how do I use my finances to honor you and to glorify you? Because here's the thing is, is God is looking to bless people. I used to have this attitude of, how do I get God? How do I get God to bless me more? How do I pry His blessing out of His hands? And that's not true at all. God is looking for people to pour out blessing and abundance and resource and prosperity on that He can trust them with that blessing for the sake of His kingdom and the sake of uh, advancing His cause here in this world. Uh, the truth is, is how do I learn to be faithful with what God's given me to prepare myself for more. And if you're that apathetic person, 
Uh, Bible doesn't really give us that opportunity. What he's saying is wherever you are right now, you're in training. If you've got 50 rand pocket money, you're in training. If you've got a 50,000 rand salary, you're in training. If you've got an uninspiring job that you find hard to go to every day, you're in training for more. And if you've got your dream job, you're in training for more. God's always looking to bless and promote and to help us go forward. Uh, so look at your circumstances as the opportunity God's given you to train for more because he's looking to bless. Next week, we're going to get into the subject of really practically how we kind of divide up our money uh, and where the money goes and, and how to have an attitude to steward our hearts in practical ways. But this week, have a discussion about, I suppose, where you're at with regards to finances, how free you are, whether there's fear or greed, and be honest, we all struggle with this uh, in and out. Sometimes we can have no complete freedom and a month later be in this place of fear. Uh, so this is such a human, such a, a normal part of our Christian faith. Uh, and have this discussion and invite God to challenge you in new areas of your life.